And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is July 5th, 2022. Of course, the day after July 4th. Hope everybody had a great uh, July 4th holiday. Got to do what they wanted to do. I know I did with my family. Did a little swimming, outdoor cooking, and pretty much the same thing that everybody does on July 4th to enjoy Independence Day. No doubt about it. Hope everybody is uh, back to work. In my, my case, I'm still kind of enjoying a little bit of vacation for a few more weeks. But we're going to bring you some of the best talent in music over the next few weeks, as we always do here on the Backstage Pass, the best and the brightest out there in uh, country music and sometimes other genres we do pop and rock out there we're live on the youtube channel the backstage pass and of course at the sports guys uh podcast.com i'm ready for football season i can't ready you guys see me wearing the hat and it's just july right around the corner uh coming up there cannot wait to see the cardinals uh, play coming up here in 2022 and also if you're a football fan whatever team you root for be sure and root hard out there too it's gonna be a fun uh football season out there too and of course you can catch the show at nightwaveradio.net and good stuff out there is uh wherever you can find podcasts you can find uh the backstage pass out there well i'll tell you what one of the cool things is every time it crosses my desk out there we get to learn about new talent and man talent finds us everywhere too and i tell you what another promising young country star he's catapulted himself into a big big music career out there and uh from colorado so yes he's a broncos fan as he told me before, we kind of set up the show coming up today. As uh, Johnny Day, Nashville recording artist, joins us here on the backstage pass. So, Johnny, what's up, man? Not much, my friend. How you guys doing? Doing. We're doing good, brother. It's it's good. To, how was your July Fourth? I'm gonna start there. How was the Independence Day for you? Man, it was it was fantastic. We uh we spent it. My dad came into town, so um uh, it was a great time. We get a hang out. We saw some fireworks, and uh, <laughs> we, Nashville's a little crazy with mm-hmm. the fireworks and if you go down there you might not get out so we kind of kept our distance on the fourth but we we definitely had our fair share of fireworks mm-hmm. so it's a good time <laughs> drank some good drinks and uh yeah just hung out hung out it was beautiful man happy independence day yeah it was, it was good stuff yeah i had the whole family in town and of course people i didn't even know showed up at the house the other day at one of the family uh we have some land out there here in the texas where i'm at and of course out there was uh Hello, how you doing? Good to meet you. I never met you before. Good to, <laughs> and all yeah. the spread it was enough to feed an army out there too, no doubt about it. Hey, let's talk about your story a little bit too. Uh, born there in the '90s, so I mean, growing up there uh, on that '90s country music a little bit too. But also, you got some good taste and good artists and musical influences. Uh, but Brad Paisley seemed to be a guy that really influenced you. Tell the fans, kind of the fan base out there, kind of why. And then uh, I love this because you studied his works and then taught yourself how to play guitar. I want to hear everything about this man because. Uh, this is pretty cool. You also worked in the oil field, right? Yeah. Um, uh, well, Brad Paisley is kind of the one that got me into the oil field because, um, well, to start out the whole story, I started playing guitar as a young kid, and that's how I got into, into music. And um, I was more actually into, you know, around 12 years old, I was around, I was into more of, you know, harder rock and, you know, more rebel music. You know, I was going mm-hmm. through my teenage years and the, uh, um my parents were working at the Greeley Stampede out in Colorado and Brad Paisley was there when I was I think I was about seventh grade or so and at that point in time which is funny enough I was not about country music I was you know I was more about you know Ozzy Osbourne Led Zeppelin all that good stuff and uh and and I was like mom I don't want to go into the concert but they made me come you know so I sat there in the concession stand with her Mm-hmm. while he was out there playing in the stadium and oh my gosh i started i heard this guitar and i'm like who is that they're like that's brad paisley that's who we were, we were telling you to go in there and watch him and i could have went in for free and then I, it was kind of the name stuck around in my mind and then when i was a junior in high school um i was on youtube you know i was kind of ditching class and playing around mm-hmm. on the computers getting on youtube and saw him playing ticks uh live mm-hmm. and i was like what you know, I was just blown away by it. I'm like, that's, that's what I want to do. Like, that's it right there. (laughs) And, um, uh, uh, yeah. So I, as soon as I graduated from high school, I I went to college for like a semester. I took a a music class and Mm -hmm. didn't go to the, any of the, any of the, any of the other classes. And then, uh, I was, I told my mom, I'm like, mom, I don't want you to waste your money. It was community college, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, I don't waste any money. I you know, don't, (laughs) I'm going to just join the oil field. I want to buy this guitar. And I'm going to buy this amp. And it was Brad Paisley's amp and guitar. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's what got me into the oil field originally when I was 19. And uh, I ended up buying it. I bought I bought my, my Telecaster mm-hmm. and my Dr. Z. And that kind of started me on this whole country music journey. And uh, 
And at first I started side manning for a lot of people because I was, you know, I sang and everything, but I really wanted to get the whole lead guitar aspect of it mm-hmm. um, uh, down. And I still do. I'm still, you know, I'm still working on it to this day. You know, any any <laughs> guitar player where the salt, you know, is always trying to figure out new stuff. So, um, uh, yeah. And um, so I got started in the oil field and um, uh, I actually I got the guitar and everything and then I quit because I was working mm-hmm. constantly. Um, I quit the oil field job, did like a weed spraying job for a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, so I could actually go out and play some music. And then uh, had a had a had a crash course with Jesus, and wound it up back in the oil field. And um, uh, that's where I got started, you know, working the week on week off schedule, and that gave me a lot of time, you know, to pursue my career and have make a living and fund it, you mm-hmm. know, and because. Uh, anyone nowadays knows it takes it take you gotta you know you gotta invest in yourself and absolutely it, it takes quite a bit of money to get this stuff to sound great mm-hmm. and have good quality you know and so um uh that was my whole process that was my game plan around when i turned 21 and i worked in the oil field all the way up until april of this year so i'm 28 now mm-hmm. so um uh yeah i just I, I left in april and now i'm doing music full time so um, that's kind of the that's kind of the story. It's a good roundabout story, no doubt, and, and not just Brad, but I understand there were some other big time influences: Shania Twain, uh, Brent Mason, uh, oh, Keith yeah. Urban, a shredder too. Tell me about, I guess, each individual, uh, one of those great artists themselves had a little piece. You probably could take a little something from each one of those to kind of incorporate into your sound and into your music now, right? Yeah, well, you know, Shania Twain, she was more of the singer. I was more into, you know, Shania Twain is great. I love Shania Twain, mm-hmm. but Mutt Lang, that's who I was really yeah. like. Yeah. I was like, my gosh, I listened to those Def Leppard records. And then, mm-hmm. you know, he did the country thing with her and I'll just, it blew me away. Um, uh, and how I got into Brent Mason was I was studying Brad Paisley. And then one of his influences was, was Brent Mason, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm like, well, who's this Brent Mason guy? And, and <clears throat> you know, in a roundabout way, I actually ended up in the studio with him. He, he played on my, one of my last records and that was insane. I was just, I was like a kid in a candy store. I was sitting in the control room like hey brent can you can you play this lick right here and you'd be like oh like this i'm like yeah that was great you know and so um uh that was really cool and just sitting to see it in person and how you know nice and humble he is and Mm -hmm. my gosh and then you just listen to him play and you're like oh my gosh so incredible keith urban was another big one you know um uh, he kind of brought the whole rock and roll thing into it you know more of that side into everything and the r&b which was nice for me, you know, because I uh, I grew up on a lot of different genres. So mm-hmm. being able to see somebody do that and do it well and kind of, you know, dip into that, that those type of situations is, is nice for me as a, you know, growing artist and everything. So, um, yeah, it's uh, all good, all good. They're all insane and all mm-hmm. incredible. And Keith Urban, especially on that acoustic guitar, man, he that's where I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> If you want to see someone play acoustic guitar live by themselves and just put a show on, it's it's him. So it's definitely a good time. It's That's the guy to go time. see, no doubt. Well, yeah. this latest single is one reason I had to have you, of course. I know it features uh, Zach Dyer, too, but it's a great song and love the album uh, cover, the single cover itself. Uh, just came out uh, June 24th, so not even a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Every beer, every bar. Let's talk about that one, kind of break it down, and we're we'll going to have you play a couple songs here on the show for us today acoustically. But uh, kind of where was the idea and the backstory of this one? Um, so every beer, every bar, um, that one came, that one came about, um, I was working with my producer, um, my producer is Jared and Blake Ingram or Jared, <laughs> Jared Ingram and Blake mm-hmm. Hubbard. Sorry. Um, and, uh, we, uh, we were, uh, dipping into their catalog and, and, into some Warner songs. And I just met Zach and he'd written on the song and, uh, we were just, you know, we were kind of just venturing into the outside cut thing because um, I didn't write on this one. And it was one of the, it was like, it's the third song I think I put ever put out that I didn't write. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I heard it and, well, we all heard it. And we're just like, my goodness, like, why aren't you guys cutting this? You know, I'm like, so we're <laughs> like, hey, let's cut it and see what happens, you know, and put it out. And it's a great song. It's a good summer song. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it talks a lot about my life when I was a kid and uh getting over heartbreak it's funny i was just on a podcast a couple days ago and we were talking about my, one of my ex-girlfriends uh she either well she either pawned my guitar or got stolen out of her trunk it was one of my first guitars i had my like my parents ever bought mm-hmm. me 
So, you know, that's a good reason to drink a beer, you know, especially once you hear the song, it's about, yeah. you know, a heartbreak and all that good <laughs> stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, it just related to my life a lot because when I was a kid, man, I was like I said, I was a rock and roller. I was into all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I, I, I partied hard when I was a kid. Nowadays, I'm a little more, you know, I'm a little more goal oriented and Jesus oriented and all that good stuff. But back when I was a kid, man, this, <laughs> this is a this is a this is a chapter out of my life. So mm -hmm. um I thought it would be cool to put a song out like that that kind of shines light on, you know, who I was and what I did and, you know, and just a fun song. You know, it's just a good twist on words yeah, and it's, it's a good time. So it's a good song. We're driving up down the highway. Of course, I added it to the playlist. Uh, I love to drive. We all love the freeway, man. We hate the access roads. But when you get on the freeway, you crank it up, you have a good time. And it just uh, like for me driving a truck, there's there's nothing better than playing just one of those good, fast country, good old heartbreak type of songs. And that's why I loved it so much there, brother. Well, I tell you, um, let's have you play a little something here for us on the show here, too. We can definitely start with the single. But as I always say, dealer's choice. So, brother, wherever you want to start with it, it is all yours yeah, here on the backstage for sure. fest. Well, I mean, since we're talking about it, I'll go ahead and play it. Let's do it. Um, here we go. So it's called Every Beer, Every Bar. Here we go. Try singing all them sad songs to make your memory disappear. I tried hanging with a new crowd. But everywhere we go, it's like you're still here. I tried yoga, but it ain't my style. Tried going sober, it lasted one night. I'm done trying, I tried everything. And girl, I'm getting over you, even if I have to drink. Every beer and every bar, there ain't a cold one too far from california to mississippi sip every sip till i don't care that you ain't with me i'm gonna rob the bus wherever it's going to might be hungover but you know i'll be over you so tonight i'm gonna start with every beer and every bar yeah yeah and every bottle on a rooftop and every tavern with a tab i'll leave the country if i have to it don't matter where i'm at girl i'll be tipping back every beer and every bar there ain't a cold on too far from california to mississippi sip every sip till i don't care that you ain't with me i'm going around the bus wherever it's going to might be hung over but you know i'll be on route so tonight i'm gonna start with every beer and every bar yeah oh yeah Every Corona down in Mexico, and every Bud Light, and every country song, every long neck pop top, I won't stop till I'm drowning every drop of you. Every takes every beer, and every bar, there ain't a cool on too far from california to mississippi sip every sip till i don't care that you ain't with me i'm gonna ride the bus wherever it's going to i'll be hung over but no i'll be over you so tonight i'm gonna start with every beer and every bar every beer and every bar every bar yeah. Oh yeah, that's where I'm going tonight. Yeah, every beer and every bar. There you go. Mute <laughs> that too right there. It'll be better. Johnny can hear me now. Now Johnny Day here on the backstage pass. Of course, I always like to mute my mic too as well. No feedback when you guys are performing live. Just one of those little technical things you do here on a, a podcast, no doubt about it. Back here on the uh, backstage pass, powered by the sportsguyspodcast.com. 
And of course, uh, coming up here in a couple hours, we'll have former American Idol sweetheart Grace Lear is going to join us here. Another great Nashville recording artist uh, talking about her single After One. We're going to take a short, uh, quick time out here, of course, pay some bills here on the Backstage Pass. Get a word in uh, for our sponsors. More with Johnny Day, of course. You want to check out the latest uh, single out there. Make sure you guys do that. Every beer, every bar. You just heard it right there on the uh, Backstage Pass. We're live on the YouTube channel and, of course, at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. We're with Johnny here on the Backstage Pass. We're back in a flash. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrell and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show again, Johnny Day joining us here on the Backstage Pass, again powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And, of course, coming up here in the fall, we're back with Outlaw Fantasy too. Myself and C.J. Garten here talking fantasy football and then some as we love to do our little sports talk show at least once a week. And, of course, uh, keep it tuned out there, too. Some great shows coming up. Grace Lear at 3.30 today. And, of course, uh, some great shows next this week and next week as we uh, fill it up in July with some of the brightest and best in country music out there. Of course, you'll hear from Kirsty Krause and Nick Canizales, my co-host here on the Backstage Pass coming up this week and next week as I get uh, back in the saddle too, man. I'd say it's, I've been lucky taking some time off this year, which has been really just yeah. really great to have the extra time off. Hey, I want to go back to uh, what you guys did, a great performance of Every Beer, Every Bar, which is the latest single from, from Johnny out there. But, um, man, I'll tell you, one that really struck me too, Johnny, was uh, Too Good for Givers. You guys put that out in, in 2020, a great music video. That's on your website, johnnydayofficial.com. Tell me kind of how this one came together and, and kind of the message that you guys uh, sent with a very, very uh, a strong, strong tune there too. Um, so that one, uh, that one I wrote um, with uh, Hallie Kearns and mm-hmm. Hallie Cook, Allie Cook or Ellie Keck. Sorry, I always mess up her last name. Uh, and sh- that was, uh, I- I'd heard a uh, Billy Graham. I was listening to a Billy Graham sermon mm-hmm. and they were talking about his wife and how incredible of a woman she was and uh some random guy walks up to her and asks her you know how do you make a marriage last you know and she told him it takes two good forgivers and i was like man that's a song Mm -hmm. and uh so i got together with them and we wrote that first verse and then i kind of wrote the rest of it and um yeah we went in and Cut that one, actually, that Brent Mason, he plays on that song, too, um, speak of him. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that's one of those songs, man, where it's like when I go out, you know, however big or small, you know, however, you know, whatever happens, um, that's one where it's like that's the one I want to be remembered by because, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's the truth for me, and I think it applies to, to so many people. And it can give so much freedom to a lot of people as well. And, you know, that's why I'm here. You know, playing music is just to give people freedom and a good time and uh, uh, to, to relate to them and uh, give them that same feeling that I get when I listen to great songs. So, um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that one's close to my heart, too, especially when I play it for my wife. So I always say music is just like a good movie, man. You can never put down your favorite movies when you get a chance to watch them with, with your kids or with, uh, just like I said, your significant other, enjoying the time there, too. And 
you're gonna read a song is good a song is good it's gonna send a great message and you guys did that with another one back in 2020 i guess during the the, the pandemic no doubt uh nothing better to do give me the lowdown on that one yeah nothing better to do that was a song uh, I, w- I wrote with will rambo and Sheree austin um that was a little bit more, you know, that one like really talked about what I did when I was a kid, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had nothing better to do. So we were out doing a lot of stuff we shouldn't be doing. And uh, it was a good time for sure. We, uh, we, I think we, we pictured it pretty good. We, we, <laughs> we wrote out my life pretty good on that one too. So I, as you could tell from talking to me, I was kind of a, I was a wild child, man. My, I feel good. so bad for my parents. <laughs> I feel so bad for my parents. I put them through hell. So. Man, I, I I can't imagine what's going to happen with my kids. So <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing, and I became a uh, dad a couple yeah. of years ago, and, and she's yeah. got a lot of my personality, and she has no patience. So I never had much patience yeah. patience growing up as, as a kid. Um, I guess much less as an adult now too. But I'm learning through through my my child, my daughter. Patience is a, is a virtue, and it comes. Uh, you, you got to work on that. It's such such a key. So yeah. you'll you'll learn through that when you become a father when it slows you down a little bit, and you yeah. got to. Worry about someone else beside yourself. You learn to have patience with that kid too. Of course, yesterday she said, "I'm mad at you, Daddy." I'm like, "Okay, what do we do here? What happened, baby? What happened?" You know, I don't know, but it was one of those uh, <laughs> those good things where it just it's it's always fun to see their personality kind of come out. And she's doing that now. Hey, I want to ask you about this, uh, and it's it's great being a parent, no doubt. But uh, you know, for a lot of people early on in their career, uh, they they talk about you know not doing this for awards. Kind of the message you said when you talked about that, Johnny, about playing music, hoping somebody can you know feel something and. Uh, listening to it if it's a great song but uh for you uh one of the early kind of uh virtues that i saw was the rocky mountain country music awards uh you guys got nominated for new country artist and performer of the year and you played a bunch of these venues and events tell me what that recognition was like for you um it was it was great super cool super humbling um uh, there's a lot of great people there um i think craig campbell was there that night Mm -hmm. ian munzik a lot of you know great artists um super humbling it's fun it's cool it's nice to be recognized uh uh it takes a lot of you know i i, I think about it all the time because you know I, I worked in the oil field and now i'm doing the artist i'm doing my artist career full time and uh it takes a lot of work man it is so to be recognized and people to see what you got going on it's always you know super super honoring and energizing and it keeps you keeps you motivated to keep going so it kind of does, you know, it really what it, what motivates you for me is just within. And I think you just got to love it and you got to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hard headed too. I'm super stubborn, super, super stubborn. So <laughs> when I set my mind on something, it's, it, you know, it's like, I tell my wife, I'm like, you know, I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm sorry, baby. You're not going to see me for a couple of days. Cause I, I got to <laughs> do this and it's, I'm not going to be back till it's done. So, yeah. um, that's kind of how my music career has been too. I'm just, man, I, I, oof, I just got started and I'm just, I can't give up. I can't give up. Uh, so. You can't. You can't. That's I said the same thing with this show and started about three years ago. And uh, there's times you want to quit, times you want to throw in the towel. But, man, it only gets better. Like I said, a fine wine, you only get better with age. Um, like I said, you just keep putting out great content and great music. And you're going to affect someone out there. Like I said, it may not be the someone you think you're going to affect. But, like I said, there's a lot of people out there that pay attention to a lot of great songs. And that's what you guys are doing, man, in your camp, too, as well. Uh, let's have you play one more, man. We'll take a final timeout, come back. I know I want to talk a little uh, sports talk with you, too. The Denver Broncos expected now with the change yeah. in the card with Russell Wilson. and Russell uh, Wilson. Of course, a whole yeah. lot more. This is going to be an exciting season for you guys. And I'd say right there with, with Las Vegas and uh, – the uh, new Josh McDaniels era with the AFC West. This ought to be a fun division out there for you guys. We'll talk about that in our little sports talk, a little segment we call Rapid Fire, which is uh, kind of the fastest growing game show right now in America, which is a good thing and a good problem nice. to have because a lot of people love that too. It's Johnny Dade is the backstage pass, my friend, and uh, it's all yours. All righty. This next one I'm going to play, it's called Wild. Um, I put it out last ne- November. You can go check it out. It's just a love song. And the first time I played it for my wife, she cried like a little baby. So I'm um, uh, <laughs> Hopefully it helps you boys out there. You know, if you need to, if you need to do something sweet for your, for your old lady, you just turn this podcast on and let me sing. There you go. Tell, tell, tell them this is, this is you talking to them. I'm talking to them through. You're talking to them through me. There so. you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, you're like a flower. You dance in the breeze like nobody's watching. Nobody but me. You don't know you're perfect. You don't even try. And baby, I love you, wow. 
Yeah, your life, the waves on the ocean blue. You go where you go and you do what you do. You crash into me with the moon in your eye. And baby, I love you. I'll... You put those blue jeans on, put your hand in mine. You tell me just hold on, this could take on mine. I know wherever we go, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. And they love you, wow. Hold on, one sec, pause. My earbud, my Hear me? Uh, hey, second verse. Your life to fire just takes a spark to light up a room wherever you are. Yeah, you come in high, you burn so bright. And baby, I love you, I. You put those blue jeans on, put your hand in mine. You tell me just so on, this could take all night. I know wherever we go, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. And baby, I love you, I. Whoa. Baby, I love you. I, I don't want to try and change you. There ain't no way to. I couldn't change you if I tried. You put those blue jeans on, put your hand in mine. You tell me just so long, this could take all night. I know wherever we go, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. Oh, so baby, come on, put your hand in mine. You tell me just so long, for the rest of my life, I know wherever we go, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. By your side, cause you're all mine. Baby, I love you. I... Whoa, yeah. Is Johnny Day on the backstage pass again presented by our friends over at Banktail Whiskey, a Hank Jr. Productions, and our friends over at MitchMax.com. Of course, you can check out every beer, every bar, uh, which is the current single out there. Across all the digital platforms, that was a song they put out last November, as Johnny mentioned, called Wild. So you can also check that one out wherever you guys stream music. We'll do one final timeout. We'll come back talk about some Denver Bronco football with Johnny, of course, getting our little sports segment. And uh, you never know what questions are going to come up in the rapid fire segment. We'll take a quick timeout. Back in a flash here, it is the Backstage Pass live on the YouTube channel. And, of course, at the sportsguyspodcast.com, also nightwaveradio.net. Hang tight. We're back in a flash. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, those times will vary coming up here for the summer, of course, because of vacation and a whole lot more. So you never know who's going to come by the show. Stay tuned there. Uh, the SportsGuysPodcast.com, also out there at our YouTube channel, the Backstage Pass. Again, also NightWaveRadio.net, fantastic internet station out of Oklahoma. You can also hear us over in uh, the U.K. now, too, as well. So you guys check that out. We do feature some U.K. artists uh, from time to time. Don't forget, 3.30 today, uh, former American Idol Season 18 contestant Grace Lear. 
going to stop by and talk to talk about her latest single called After One. So be sure to look out for that. 3.30 Central Time today here on the Backstage Pass. All right, one of my favorite segments to get into with Johnny Day, our guest here on the show today, is the uh, sports slash rapid fire segment. We get to throw a few funny questions out there, get to know him more on a personal basis. And the first thing I'll do, you mentioned to me before the show about being a Broncos fan, of course, growing up in Colorado. I'm sure it had to be fun. Like the John Elway days, the back-to-back, the helicopter spin to get in the end zone uh, back when they beat the Packers in the Super Bowl. I mean, you guys have to, around your, your parents, your family, there's got to be Broncos, everything in that household, right? Oh, man. Well, growing up, I watched <laughs> – so back when they had VHS copies mm-hmm, yep. of the Super Bowl years, <laughs> yeah. I wore them out. Yeah. yeah, I wore out those VHSs. I just watched those Super Bowl seasons on repeat. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that was like that was my prized possession. But yeah, jerseys galore. We got Peyton Manning, and then when Peyton Manning came around, it was like a rebirth in all of our lives <laughs> because we had finally found a love again for life and mm-hmm. football season. Because we're so diehard, it's hard for us to watch. You know, when they're doing bad, it's hard to even watch football because it's just like, mm-hmm. oh man, that's how that's how diehard we are. So. There's no, we don't really like anybody else. I mean, I like, I, and it kills me to say I like uh, Mahomes just because mm-hmm. how great he, incredible he is. But mm-hmm. I also hate him too at the same time because you know the Chiefs are in the same division. So <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That's a tough AFC West. It always yeah. is, like I said, and it's it's great to see you know the the Vegas Raiders get better, uh, the Los Angeles Chargers, Justin Herbert, another great, just fantastic young yeah. rookie coming to the league now on his own. Uh, give me the expectations for you this year. Kind of the gut feeling of. Russell Wilson continuing to, I guess, get better with age. Of course, he had winning season after winning season in Seattle, won a Super Bowl, probably should have won two two, two titles there with, with Pete Carroll in, in Seattle. But I'll say this, the Broncos front office, to me, it sounds committed to uh, putting the players in the best positions to succeed both in the draft and free agency to give a good mix with this ball club. Russell under center, you got to feel, feel, be, be feeling pretty good going into this fall. Man, the thing that gives me hope is that John Elway, when he had Peyton Manning, he went out, he spent the money, and he got the assets for mm-hmm. Peyton to use, especially when Peyton first got there and Peyton was going crazy and just dropping bombs. Man, he really – he did a great job at front office, um, in the office. And so, man, that's my hope. That's my hope. I hope John Elway does the same thing he did with Peyton and just mm-hmm. pushes it through for um, uh, Russell. But, you know, at the same time, we've had so many down years. I'm, like, trying not to get my hopes up because, mm-hmm. you know, you get those hopes up too high, then you're like, oh, man, and they start losing again. And then it's like, oh, but Russell's good. And it's funny, too, because we could have drafted Russell, too. Mm-hmm. We could have drafted him. And we skipped. Yep. We passed on him. <laughs> I'll so, tell you what. It, that's, that's a cool thing. And i tell you another thing I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, this year, too, Johnny, is definitely Nathaniel Hackett coming over from the Green Bay Packers and having his stamp now. Yeah on an offense that he worked with Aaron Rodgers for all those years in Green Bay. They put up numbers after numbers, and it was just amazingly to see how that Green Bay offense ranked in with the top ten for two or three years in a row there, just Aaron Rodgers setting all the touchdown records, winning MVP awards. So having him in Denver there now to, to put that little kind of stamp at Red Russell and getting comfortable with the offense, and, of course, uh, Jerry Judy, another rookie who I'm still waiting for him to to come into his own, Cortland Sutton, and they've got some, some talent there too, man. So it's going to be a fun AFC West. Vegas getting better. With Josh McDaniels, of course, Justin Herbert there with the Chargers, and of course, Pat Mahomes. It's enough said right there with Andy Reid and the Chiefs. That's going to be, to me, one of the most, I guess, underappreciated divisions in football. So this ought to be fun. I'm looking forward to it, no doubt. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, yes, uh, sir. tell me what you like to do kind of in the fun time when you're not doing music. Man, I'm a hands on guy. I like to fix stuff. So one of the things that, you know, it's it you know when stuff breaks around the house that's usually what i'm doing um i i also like to watch tv and like just hang out as well mm-hmm. but usually we bought an old house i got a killer deal on my house when i first moved to nashville because i bought in 2019 before everything just skyrocketed yep. so um <laughs> but it's an older house and like i just had the water line on my house break the oh. water main line and a plumber came out and was like yeah it's gonna cost you like five grand and i'm like Shh. yeah right I did this. I did the same thing in the oil field, like, but except it was with gas and oil, and you know, way higher pressures. I'm like, I can figure this out on my own. So you know, <laughs> doing stuff like that, I, I did. You know, I did. I went out there and fixed that dang thing. So um, I, I love doing stuff like that, mm-hmm. just fixing stuff. I like, you know, I'm like any any guy out there. I like creating stuff and building stuff and watching it grow. I think that's one of my biggest passions in life is just just getting committed to something and watching it grow, you know, mm-hmm. that's like my biggest, that's my biggest thing. I, I'm not too much of a, 
I can't sit very long. You know, it's mm-hmm. hard for me to be sitting in one place for so too long. So I like to be on the move. Um, and I love my children. I, my girls, I love my, I got two little girls and man, mm-hmm. hanging out with them is the best. So that's my, that's my, when I'm not playing music, working on this artist thing and doing, doing, doing the music, busting my butt at that. I'm busting mm-hmm. my butt at being a dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, echo those sentiments, brother. Like I said, my daughter too, yeah. same time. It's, it, you, yeah. get, you get better with age and they, they try to keep you young, no doubt about it, but it's always fun. The greatest thing is, is being a dad. I tell people that's one of the best, uh, finest things in my life and didn't realize it till actually became apparent for the first time. It, it does change you. People can say it don't, but it does uh, definitely here. change you out there too. It really does. And for the better, I think for a lot of people, but the uh, best time is time spent with my wife and my daughter, no doubt about it. Uh, let me do this. Uh, favorite food, favorite beverage. Um, when you get a chance to wind up or wind down, what do you like to drink and, uh, and or eat? Oh man, I love ice cream. I'm okay. all about ice cream, man. I eat ice cream. Oh man, that's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> if I'm drinking, usually if I'm out drinking, I'm usually drinking probably tequila. I'm honestly okay. a tequila guy. I will go out, have some tequila. Um, I've been I've been venturing into the, the you know a little more pubs down lately. I was down at a sweet pub here, <laughs> the pharmacy in uh, East Nashville, and that place. Oh man, they got some good beer there. So. That's always nice, but yeah, a, bur- a burger and a beer. Oh man, that that I think that helps anyone have a, a nice relaxing time. You know, you just can't sit there too long because then you can't get back up. You know, that's the truth, brother. Carbs yeah. take over, and like I said, that that yeah. uh, tiredness will sit in. You're like, I need time for a nap after a burger and a beer. But I tell you, that's uh, two of America's yeah. finest things, no doubt. Coming off. Uh, so especially off Independence Day, man. Well, I tell you what, uh, it's been a pleasure, man, to have you here on the show again. Every beer, every bar uh, features Zach Dyer. This is the current single out there from Johnny, of course, johnnydayofficial.com uh, for you guys to go check out all the work out there and the songs and everything else. And of course, uh, I know it's great to be back on stage for you guys. Can't wait to see you. If we get up there in Nashville coming up for CRS uh, 2023, we'll be back there as a show and as a media company and looking forward to, uh, you know, putting a face with a name and shaking your hand, my friend. And like I said, continued success on this thing uh, going forward, this journey. Uh, appreciate you spending some time with us, man, today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, that's that's uh, Johnny Day here on the Backstage Pass. Don't forget, uh, 3.30 today, Grace Lear is going to drop by. We'll talk about Idol and her current single, her current After single One. After and we'll see you guys uh, 3.30 Central on the Backstage Pass. Again, thanks to the sponsors and, of course, everybody out there, the YouTube channel and at the sportsguyspodcast.com. We'll see you guys at 3.30 today with Grace on the Backstage Pass. Until then, take care.